What's up guys, Commonwealth Snow here, and today I'm going to be doing an install and sort of review on the Redcore Linux distribution. Now, as it says here, Redcore is a distribution based on Gentoo Linux. So this is kind of a unique distro in my mind. I haven't actually used a Gentoo based distro. So this one should be quite interesting. It uses the Emerge Package Manager and comes with the KDE Plasma desktop environment straight out of the box. It also says here that it's based on the Gentoo Linux testing branch, which uses a hardened profile by default. Now, Redcore Linux is in fact a fork of a now defunct Linux distribution that was known as Kogaon Linux? Kogaon? 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 Not too sure how to pronounce that. But, um... Yeah, though that distro was discontinued, so some of the team split off and made Redcore Linux, which is a sort of continuation of it. Uh, Redcore Linux also uses uh, OpenRC as the init system, which I believe is the same as Base Gen 2 as well. So it's very much like a Gen 2 Linux for the masses. I myself have never been successful in installing Gen 2 Linux, so. Maybe this is as close as I'll get for now. So let's install it. Now, installing this Linux distribution proved to be quite the chore. I first went to the download page, uh, that's on the official website, and none of these mirrors would work. Um, so there's only three official mirrors that I found so far on this site, and none of these work. So what I had to do was I had to navigate to a .torrent file this is post-editing. The .torrent file can be found on the DistroWatch website. So if you navigate to Redcore Linux on distrowatch.com or .org, whatever it is, you can find the .torrent link there, just so you know, if these uh, mirrors still don't work. So it's not the most straightforward Linux distribution download, but you can get it done. I used qubit torrent to download the torrent. The final ISO size, I think, was around 3 gigabytes, so quite large. But um, yeah, let's just get to installing it. So I'm going to navigate over to VirtualBox and I'm going to create a new VirtualBox. We'll call this one Redcore. Uh, change the version over to Gen 2 64 bit. Click Next. Now, because Gen 2 is a compile from source, sorry, the Emerge Package Manager compiles from source. You're going to want to give it a bit more RAM than you usually would. So I'm just going to give it around 6 gigabytes of RAM. I think that should be plenty. We're going to create a virtual hard disk now. And I'm also going to give it a virtual box disk image. That should be fine. I'm going to give it a dynamic allocated. And I think I'm going to give it, eh, we'll give it 20 gigabytes of storage. That should be plenty. Definitely for what we're going to be using it for anyway. Click on settings up here, uh, deselect floppy, as we don't need that, move hard disk up to the first in the boot order, so when we do install the operating system we don't have to come back to this menu to deselect optical. Uh, we're going to leave everything down here, going to go to processor, we'll give it two cores, there should be plenty, bump the video memory up to 128 megs, and change the graphics controller from VMS VGA to VBOX VGA to enable us to go full screen. Click on storage, on empty. Click on this disk icon and then locate your chosen I well locate your Redcore Linux ISO. Mine's just here. Nice and easy. Click OK, and we're ready to start the install. Start Redcore. Now this will boot us into a live environment. Uh, so very much reminiscent of Linux distributions you are familiar with by now. Uh, and as you will see, the actual installer is also very, very similar to other Linux distributions. Uh, I think it's the same, it's definitely the same as Manjaro's install installer. And it's either the same or very similar to Linux Mint's uh, installer as well. So that's pretty nice. You get that nice familiarity with what is often thought to be a very, very difficult uh, operating system to install and maintain. Mm -hmm. 
All right, we get a little bit of a boot sound there. So that's pretty interesting. Um, we get red core there, and obviously we're going to want to uh, install the system. There we go. We've got this thing full screen, so we can double click and install the system. Very nice. And here we go. We have the nice Linux installer, the very familiar Linux installer. So we're going to click on here. Going to click British English. Click next. Yep, London's my time zone, English UK keyboard, so very much the the same old, same old Linux installer when it comes to installing Redcore. We'll click Erase Disk, I'm not going to create a swap, I don't need one, but obviously you're free to do so. If you are trying to dual boot this operating system, I you would need to manually partition these yourself as to not interfere with the other partition. You do get the option to encrypt your system, I'm not going to bother with that. Click next. Here we get to put our name. So I'll put my name there. Uh, the name of the virtual box. I'm going to think I'm going to call mine Red Core Box. Choose a password. I'm just going to enter a very secure password there. Um, you can require it to have strong passwords, but I'm not too sure what the point of that is. I'm sure you'd be able to tell if the password's strong or not. Um, you do get the option to log in automatically without asking for the password. I'm going to deselect that. I don't think that's a very good idea to have it enabled anyway, just for good practice. And I am going to use the same password for the administrator account, which is also bad practice. But this is a virtual machine, so I'm not too bothered about that. But if you were going to be installing this on a laptop, which is one of the uh, recommended places to install this operating system, you'd probably want to do that. So it gives you a nice overview of all the settings you've selected. I'm going to click install, install now, and wait a little bit. Now this installer massively simplifies the installation of what would normally be a Gen 2 installation. Obviously we have a bit of overhead with this one, we get some basic software and a desktop environment, so if you're looking for a window manager, I'm sure it's just as easy to uninstall this as it is on a distro like Arch or Base Gen 2 to uh, then put on your own desktop environment or a window manager. And of course we have to have the general color of red. Even our mouse cursor is a very funky red. And then the NVIDIA logo on here as well. Oh, that's cursed. We also have an icon in the top left which does stay in the final installation to ask for help. Now I do believe this that button actually navigates to an IRC channel with uh, some red core developer, red core supporter, supporting personnel. So if you are stuck on a problem and the internet can't, uh, can't help you with that and you're not too sure where to go, you can do that and hopefully get a response in a timely fashion, hopefully you won't be wasting all day. I'm not going to be testing that feature, obviously, I don't want to waste their time if they are on there, but it's there if you need it. Alright, so our system has just finished installing, that did take a little while, I think it took around 10-15 minutes, like, it, took a, it took a long while, not too sure why that might be, but... So, we can click restart now, and click done. And because of the way we set up our virtual machine to start with, our we don't need to turn it off and go into VirtualBox. We can just reboot it and it should work fine. Alright, so let's boot into Redcore GNU slash Linux. Get a nice little uh, bootloader there, nice little loading bar, very red as the name would imply. We do get this configuration file not writable error kind of thing, not too sure what that is but we'll see if it uh, troubles us or not. And here we are on the uh, KDE Plasma login screen. So you're going to want to enter your user account uh, password And wait a little minute. Get a nice little login jingle. And there we go. We're now booted into Redcore Linux with the KDE Plasma desktop environment. So, first impressions. Very red. 
blue wallpaper and honestly quite plain and I, and I think that's a good thing now from what I understand you do get a few different programs to come that comes with this um, you get all the different tabs that normally come with a KDE Plasma install uh, you know you get these maths and stuff like that um, it does come with Lutris and Steam which is quite interesting um, for the graphics you get GIMP um, we do get the LibreOffice uh, suite as well which I think is quite nice get a few other off programs here and there uh, it comes with Chromium uh, and Qubit Torrent along with a, a mail program Thunderbird like Thunderbird mail got mail spring uh, multimedia, MPV player, and VLC. So not too bad. I'm not too sure what these other ones are, but I'm sure they're useful. Um, like I say, the Lib LibreOffice suite, uh, system settings, many different things in system. Comes with HTOP, uh, the console terminal, which is default with the KDE Plasma desktop environment. Dolphin as the file manager. Like I say, that is KDE Plasma. And all of these obviously you can uninstall and replace with whatever, you, with whatever you want. Now I think that's the goal. I think this is one of the goals of this operating system is to present you with the easy install and a base set of programs for Gentoo, and then allowing you, enabling you to then customize your system afterwards without ever going through the actual install of Gentoo, which to beginner users can be a massive pain. I've installed Arch. 10 times and I haven't been able to wrap my head around the Gen 2 installation yet though I am confident I will do in the near future I'll make sure to make a video on that at some point uh, we have a utility section calculator stuff like that and then uh, obviously the different power options so not too bad so if we head into HTOP we can see what kind of processors are running uh, let's change the window size here all right so we're using 770 megs, which is quite quite a lot considering we're running Gen 2, but we are running KDE Plasma, and I'm guessing that's what is using most of the memory. It wouldn't surprise me anyway. KDE Plasma is a really hungry desktop environment. If you uninstalled it and then we're using something like, I don't know, DWM or i3, I'm assuming you'll be getting a lot less memory usage. So I'm going to control C out of that. Click on this start menu, type in here, type in console, and then navigate over to the terminal. Now we're going to make ourselves root with SU, as this system does not come with sudo, uh, as far as I'm aware, or any other sort of uh, privilege manager, I guess you could say. Uh, so we're going to do SU, and then enter your administrator password that will make you root, and then we're going to type in this command. We're going to type in emerge neofetch. Now with the Emerge Package Manager, it's going to build this from source, which will make it a lot more efficient, but also can take a little bit longer to install. Like I say, it's going to just take a little bit longer than usual, but there we go. Now we can do a clear command, type in NeoFetch and get that oh sweet sweet thing everybody looks for when they install a new Linux distribution. So as you can see, we have the Redcore Linux Hardened 2102 edition. Polaris x86 underscore 64 with the kernel version of 5.14.10 dash red core must have their own little spin on it with the plasma desktop environment and tells you the theme there icons and all the other stuff NeoFetch usually tells you about we do have 1369 packages installed by default including NeoFetch um, with the Emerge Package Manager. Now, that is quite a lot for a Gen 2 system, but don't forget, this is a fully featured, quote, pre-made Gen 2 installation. You haven't had to install anything manually, and I think that is, a, I think that's forgivable, the uh, the package count, especially considering our desktop environment. I mean, we have uh, KDE Plasma here, and like I said, that's a, that's a beefy boy, but it's also very, very customizable, so you could even get away with keeping uh, KDE Plasma and customizing it the way you want. I'm sure there's a bunch of threads on r slash Unix porn on how to do that, but very nice. Look, the default internet browser for this, I believe, is Chromium. So we'll click on that and see how that goes. Goes right. I think, uh, yeah, I think this is just um, 
Chromium. I don't think it's D Google D well, what's it called? I don't think this is D Google Chromium. I think this is literally just Chromium. I'm not too sure though, I've got to admit, I've never actually used D Google Chromium. But you know, it's a basic web browser. I wouldn't I wouldn't use uh, Chromium myself, but I'm sure um, installing Firefox is easy enough. It will take, as I say, a lot longer to install a operating system as you do need to compile it from source. You can install binaries, from what I understand. You know, you've got to have the full Gen 2 experience. You've got to compile everything from source. So let's double click this ask for help up here. Huh. Okay, okay. So I think what's going on here is um, KDE is looking for Firefox in order to run this. But as we've seen, Firefox is, isn't actually installed on the system. So... I'm sure that's an easy enough change, but um, get a nice little system settings here. You can change the appearance through these uh, through the GUIs, power management if you're on a laptop, or Bluetooth stuff like that. Even Thunderbolt as well. Thunderbolt device management is not too bad. So yeah, it's a pretty basic Linux distribution when you get down to it. Um, it's just running on Gen 2. You wouldn't know it just from looking at it. Runs very smoothly. Haven't had any crashes or anything dodgy going on. You will need to do some system maintenance and a bit of after installation. You will you will need to install some programs. For example, I would recommend you install Firefox and uninstall Chromium. Maybe install a degoogled Chromium, something like that. Um, but everything you do install will take longer, obviously, if you're building it from source with the Emerge Package Manager. But yeah, honestly, not too bad, not too shabby at all. I, if, oh, I just opened my host thing. If I was a Gen 2 fan and I couldn't be bothered with a Gen 2 installation, I wouldn't mind just slapping this on and seeing how it goes. So I think that's going to be it. This is just a really quick run over of um, Red Core Linux, like I say, based off of Gen 2, it really intrigued me. I was just on Distro Watch and uh, clicking on the random distribution button that they have on there, and it came up with Red Core, and I was quite interested in it to be honest, because I've been wanting to install Gen 2 for a while now. I haven't built up the uh, courage to do it yet. I might do it after this. I don't know. But I'll definitely be make sure to make a video on the Gen 2 installation whenever I wrap my head around it. But um, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Alright, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. Um, if you did, we've got a bunch of stuff on the channel like this, so if you want to go check it out, I think we have uh, 19 or 20 videos on the channel now, so be sure to check that out. Thank you again very much for watching. I hope you have a nice day, wherever you are, and stay safe. See you soon.